Hi there, and once again, you're back here with Barry. Uh, we are May 8th, and um, U.S. is uh, day 56 of this ridiculous lockdown. We have uh, in the DR, we're hitting day 50, we'll see. But I, I could tell you from the mainstreams, uh, if it's already out in the mainstreams about all the mistakes and how it's already so blown out of proportion and everything like that, like I said, uh, I think it was even yesterday as early as that. Give it about 10 to 14 days, 10 to 14 days, and watch. You could already see the momentum. Uh, now that it's out in the mainstreams, they want so people will be flooding and forcing and getting a little more boisterous, and they'll be going back to work. And uh, you'll see anywhere from 7 to 14 days. Listen, guys. Um, I had a little talk with the mentors about, uh, you know, what we're doing on some of the private things uh, for our families, our four families. However, just reading off some cheat notes here, they wanted me to, um, we're going to stay with this, like, like I had said, we're not going forward until people are going back to work, but nothing else uh, is really going to matter at that time. But we do want to also touch on another subject while you're under uh, lockdown and uh, or the majority of you are under lockdown. And I want to bring this to uh, everyone's attention. And that is um, we're leaving that station. Okay. To a degree about uh, COVID. Now, of course, when there's uh, exceptional pieces of information, uh, like the doctors have been doing, and uh, Butar and uh, Judy Mikovic, and uh, when there's some really game-changing stuff, like what uh, I guess now uh, Fauci is being investigated, and also, and uh, that type of cunning, breaking type of real news, but but real news, we're going to feature it, but we're going to also leave that station because if it's on mainstream, it's old. It's getting old. If people won't recognize it, I told you some of the decisions you're going to have to make are not going to be easy decisions to be making. And um, it's your choice to make them or not. Again, I don't judge. None of us mentors do. But anyway, here's the consensus. The mentors think it's time to leave the station and stay a little bit ahead, at least the most part. Uh, we need to bring up what you're going to start seeing more and more evidence of. You're, some of you are already experiencing it now, and that is shortages. So, um, like I said, we'll continue with what the COVID's all about on major uh, details, but the next few videos are going to be coming in from just good boots on the ground people here and uh, good folks just telling you what they're experiencing. It might be a, a rancher from Texas. It might be somebody who's been doing YouTubes for longest of times and has beautiful greenhouses and he helps people and he grows a lot of his own food. And I'm just having my afternoon coffee here. And, um, I'm going to sit back and watch this with you because it even was a little bit shocking to old Barry. Now, I know five years ago we've been saying 2020 this was going to be happening, but much the same as this gentleman in the video who I have absolutely no, I, I could see the sincerity in it. Um, I have no no reason to deny what he's what he's doing here. He's only trying to help, but I see the shock in himself and uh there's somewhat a shock in old Barry, too. Um, I did not. Anybody, I'll pick it up on the other side, but, in, but before you watch this, it's about 16 minutes. So spend 16 minutes with old Barry here. I'm going to enjoy a afternoon coffee here while I do it, so I'll cut off camera. But I'll pick it up on the return. Um, whoever thought a little over eight weeks ago, approximately eight weeks ago, that this could be America. This could be United States of America. The next few days, what you're going to be seeing here, okay? We knew that over 50% of the uh, of the population was on some sort of government aid. We knew that 45% of the population, and we we've told all this stuff, could not survive a thousand dollar emergency without going into bankruptcy. Anybody who was foolish enough to believe the economy was rolling and it was never better is a fool of Keynesian economics. And those people, unfortunately, 
we are spiritual beings, but we live in a physical world. They're going to they're going to experience what the five senses can can uh, enable them to experience when that and that is uh, suffering and hardship. And I'm sorry to say that, but we're trying to, if people refuse to get on board what is real, and, and yes, it's scary, and yes, and if they're not willing to fight through some kind of fear, especially a fear, I forget who it was, but back in the days when America, back back in its earliest days when there were still even abominations like slavery, I remember one quote, and she, it was, she said, I, I, I could have saved so many more of them if they only knew they were slaves. And that's kind of, I, I could, boy, could I understand that. Um, we appreciate everything everybody's doing, and we're getting thousands jumping on board, but it should be tens of thousands to millions. Uh, this is beyond a shadow of a doubt. Listen to this dear man as he describes what he's seeing in his hometown of Chesterfield. And uh, I think that's in Virginia. I believe so. Anyway. Hey everybody, you turn on the TV, you look online, you look on social media, you're always seeing news stories. Uh, sometimes they're um, pretty bad, uh, sad, tragic, but you watch the story and then you think about it for a few minutes and you go on about your life because it doesn't really affect you. It's kind of uh, way off in the distance. Uh, you don't really think about it until it hits home. And I've seen some things online and on TV recently that I kind of saw from a distance and they didn't affect me a whole lot. And then I saw one of the situations up close and personal and it kind of changed my perspective. Stick around, I'll tell you what I'm talking about. So I'm in my 10th year of making videos here on YouTube. Started out with a little greenhouse back there uh, growing uh, stuff in grow bags. I've done the row gardens, raised beds, in ground in the greenhouse, the Dutch buckets, uh, Dr. Cracky stuff. Some of just about everything I could think of. Growing vegetables, growing food for me, my family, people in the community, and I've tried to uh, instill what knowledge I have into other people so they could do the same thing. And I tell you, it's it's been successful because I've seen a whole lot of people doing the Dutch bucket stuff and basically duplicating what I did. And uh, it's kind of like a, a proud papa from time to time, seeing a new setup that somebody did and it's working absolutely perfectly. That's nice to see. Uh, a lot of people having success growing vegetables outside in the ground, doing raised bed stuff. Uh, so I've tried to help out over the years and I've also encouraged people to try to be self-sufficient. Don't sit back and wait for uh, a bad situation to happen and then think uh, Uncle Sam is going to come along and take care of you because that ain't going to happen. If it does, you're not going to like the results. Now a couple days ago, I'm riding up Route 10 in Chester and I get to a sign and I see the sign says uh, left lane closed up ahead. And as y'all watch this, I'm going to kind of narrate exactly what was going on. And I'm looking and I see the cars, it's a two lane, well, it was actually a four lane road, but there's two lanes going each direction. And then there's uh, the shoulder over here and all the cars are lined up on the shoulder. And the sign says left lane closed ahead. And I'm wondering, are they both lanes closed? What's going on as I'm driving up through there and I don't want to pass all these cars and then have to get back over in front of them because I'm just not that type of person. As I'm going on and I see the other vehicles behind me, they're all coming too. So... I'm like, okay, we'll keep going. And the cars stayed on the shoulder and they just stayed in that line. And then I couldn't figure out what is going on. And my wife says, um, isn't the food bank right up here? And I thought about it for a minute. I said, yeah, you know what? The food bank is up here, but it's, it's a pretty good ways up there. Um, there's got to be some other situation going on because there's no way all these people are waiting to get into the food bank. And as we kept going, the line kept going, and the cars just, it was amazing. And the closer I got to it, the, the more you kind of, you ever had that kind of sick feeling in your stomach when you're, something is just not right? Uh, what you're seeing is uh, not what you want to be believing. And as we got up there, and then you could see the parking lot, and the parking lot was jam-packed with cars. And I've been by that food uh, bank many times. Never seen more than, you know, maybe eight, ten cars out there. No big deal. 
But this was different, and they were just, it was a, a mile and a half long. I did the uh, odometer, I looked at it, because we actually went by the first time, and it just blew me away. So we turned around and came back, and then got the camera the second time to film it, because it can't be real. So you see all that stuff going on as we made the trip coming back uh, from the, uh, the other angle. And you got a chance to, to see the faces of the people. And if you drive, if you watch the video a little bit slower, you, maybe you could get an idea of who was in, in the cars and stuff like that. A lot of times you think um, when there's a food giveaway or any kind of giveaway, you just got people running up there because it's free, uh, rolling up in their Mercedes and Lexuses and things like that. And this time I didn't get the impression that was the case. I didn't see those uh, fancy cars anyway out there, but it just felt totally different seeing this firsthand and the expression on the people's faces and then the realization that a lot of them could have been small business owners they've lost their business uh, the employees are gone they're not getting help from the government um, they're uh, unemployed maybe they had a uh, some people work cash business you know just work on the side or whatever uh, they're going to get no help a lot of these people are just told stay home close up your business stay home and then how in the hell are they going to feed themselves they've got no income probably got a mortgage or rent car payment insurance light bill children to feed themselves to feed how are they going to do that when you basically terminated their livelihood and it just just hit me in a way that i felt i felt really sad because these were fellow americans um, in the same country that I live in, the same state that I live in, and they were really having a hard go of it. This Wuhan thing really hadn't affected me all that much other than, um, you know, Lowe's closing early and Walmart closing early. So if I needed something late in the day, well, I can't finish up my work and then go right about dark and go get it because by the time I get there, they're closed. Aside from that, and, um, you know, some of the situations having to get in different lines outside the store to get in or whatever. I hadn't been, really been that much affected by it. But to see these people, and the only thing I can say, you know, please, I said this before in videos in the past, if you live in the inner cities, if you live in a, a, a small apartment or a townhouse, condo, whatever, a little subdivision where they're the mayors and governors are being like dictators mandating that you stay inside folks get out of there call up a distant relative or somebody and just get out to the country go stay with them a while and try to figure out what's going on at least you'll be out where you can plant some seed get some vegetables growing have something to eat assuming you're not in uh, michigan where they even deemed uh vegetable seeds and uh the nurseries and garden centers were non-essential, so they shut them down, which was totally asinine if you uh, ask me. But you can still order seeds online, I think, so uh, don't let that stop you from trying to grow your own stuff. I'm going to keep posting videos, uh, showing people what I do here, trying to encourage as much as possible. Um, there's a lot of bad things about to happen. You just got a feeling that something, something ain't right out there. You got meat shortages coming government talking about handing out money left and right just throwing money trying to keep people situated so they don't get out in the street and start uh pitching a fit and stuff like that and i'm trying to do this from a non-political standpoint um i think most of you if you know me been watching me for a while you know where i stand politically uh i'm going to do what i can to um help people grow stuff i'll be posting more videos doing the best i can with that but in terms of politics I want, to, I want to say one thing right now, and this, this is the one thing that pisses me off more than anything about the entire situation. I am sick and damn tired of this thing about non-essential workers, non-essential people, non-essential jobs. Let me tell you something. Back in 2016, we talked about the difference between legal and illegal immigration and all you heard was no 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 there's no such thing as an illegal human being all human beings are legal you can't call them illegal i tell you what if you can't call somebody that's breaking the law by entering this country or any other country illegal then you damn sure can't go out there and call somebody who has taken their entire livelihood and put it into a business 
their heart and soul and everything they had into a business and then the government comes along and deems them non-essential you have to shut down and lose every damn thing you ever work for you can't call them non-essential all these people in the restaurants the waiters the servers and stuff the restaurant owners the people done your hair and salons and nails and all this kind all the other small businesses out there that they said shut down you are non-essential let me tell you something every damn one of those people were essential and they had essential jobs how do i define an essential job if you have a job where you earn money whether it be a paycheck or cash or whatever do that puts food in your belly puts a roof over your head and allows you to take care of yourself and your family or whatever the situation is and not depend on the united states government to take care of you your job is essential you are essential I don't care if your job is shoveling shit out of a... Okay, guys, there you have it. Um, we're going to link it as always, but, you know, uh, reconfirming here. Yeah, don't wait for a bad situation to happen. I mean, you know, it's, it's basically we're all telling, we've all been saying the same things. Here's a fella that grows a fair bit of his own, you know, vegetation and, you know, I'm sure seasonal fruits wherever he lives. Uh, but the problem is, don't wait for a bad situation to happen, but the problem is right now, it already has. So, you know, procrastination. What, uh, don't expect Uncle Sam is going to come along and take care of you, because that ain't going to happen. Well, I mean, just take a look, for example, at another program, which would be the unemployment. Now, I, I do realize, you know, I realize there was just under 7 million people in, in, you know, in a very short period of time and it flooded. I do understand all that, but just it's still mayhem. These programs were not designed for this. Your government was not designed to take care of you. They were designed to take from you. Somehow you didn't read the sentence right because here's a question. Are any of them suffering? Other than when they come up on the podium and talk between two thatches, which is a, a symbol in itself, which is for a later time, and they sit in there in the House of Congress. Remember what, uh, what a herd of baboons is. It's a Congress. Anyway, you can see this dear man is sincere. He's getting fed up like I'm getting fed up uh, about it too, but... You have to understand a large part of this is your own fault, okay? Just because somebody said close up your business, it was your responsibility for your whole life, not just this. They've just con conditioned the bulk of society to a point where they they know what they're dictating now. They know how much you'll take, and they know if we say jump, you're going to probably answer how high. It, they've got it down to a science. I mean, it's so predictable, but... Um, you know, that was a sli an interesting point, too. Uh, around the 345 mark, I believe, you ever had that kind of sick in your stomach feeling when you know something's just not right? I have. Oh, yeah, more than once, too. And not just about this, about other things, being in a country or being going down a bad street, a bad area in a country I'm not too familiar with or when something major breaks at sea and, you know, you're... You're on a ship that hasn't been really looked after too good, and there's some storm coming ahead. That kind of stuff. Yep, I know it. Around the 345 mark, uh, he states here, I don't know. Usually you might find 8 to 10 cars implying about what's usually in front of that food hall. The man's been, been living there for decades, so he knows roughly. He's been by there countless times. Usually eight to ten cars in front of that food. All I could say is, holy crap! And I know it's not like that all through the nation. I know that. But I do have some other clips that have... Don't forget, everybody's... All you great people have been giving us some awesome stuff to help spread out. And I only hope you're helping. Well, obviously you are. Look at the numbers of how our, we're spreading around. It's all in efforts to help people, but I've got from Orlando. I've got from other parts of Virginia. I've got from parts, uh, parts of Ohio. Uh, a little bit now from Canada, too. Uh, the thing is, how can you dispute with me that at once you had a strong economy two months ago? 
when all these people are already lining up in food lines. Now, again, I'm not sugarcoating this. A lot of it's their own fault. A lot of my subscribers, everybody that's writing comments to me, a lot of them I know have already done some preparation, have stocked some things. You don't have to go crazy at the toilet paper, uh, dot com bubble in the toilet paper industry a couple of months ago. You didn't, don't worry if you miss that. I mean, so you have a little stock here. You have a little perishables, canned goods, uh, non-perishables rather, canned goods, pastas, pasta sauces, canned fishes. I, I mean, there's no rocket science here. We can move to other parts if you have relatives in the country. You could start talking to people. People even that have fruit trees in their backyard and stuff like that. And maybe you could work a little horse trading. I mean, get creative. Don't forget, um, you can stock cases and cases of milk. Just get UHT milk. I mean, the until you open it, the shelf life is months. UHT cream. So, the, you know, there's no, um, there's lots of things that could be done. A lot of them uh, are not expensive, but... By gosh, as best you think you can, because everybody's different. There's a lot of information out there, but these are good, honest people just telling it straight. And he's trying to do his part, and we're going to get his name out there, and hopefully, uh, you know, this will go and, and reach a lot of people, too, because a lot of people might be able to benefit from a little bit of green thumb um, you know, instruction here. You don't need, I know this for a fact, from, from hands-on experience, you don't need much, much area to feed a couple of people. Some greens, some carrots, some things like that, some basic things that will grow in your region, in your weather. I mean, um, th there's, you know, but again, uh, I just also know the non-perishables, okay? In this case, pack big on this, the canned stuff, the bottled stuff, the stuff that doesn't need refrigeration. Go in that direction is going to be your best choice. Listen, um, all I could say is we're, I'm not saying it's perfect, but we're sure glad we're nowhere near anything like that at all. I mean, Leanne or I could walk and uh, take a two-block radius and, and find goats walking in somebody's yard or something like that. Uh, but at the 354 mark also, I mean, he's saying this is a mile and a half long. I tried to find a video, too. Again, sometimes, you know, a picture's worth a thousand words, and I tried to find a video, and I couldn't. But here's the concept of it. For the longest time now, and I, I've made mention of this recently, for the longest time now, because of how systems have changed and everything is digital, if the amount of people that are actually on government food programs today, the amount of people that are on these today, if it was back in the days when they had the uh, food stamp and it had to be counted and you had little books and, and all of this kind of stuff in its infancy stages, uh, there was a couple of reports and I just couldn't find them and I, I can't spend any more time on it. But they're saying that the amount of people right now in America now, in America we're talking, that the line would be at your average Walmart almost three quarters of a mile long. You see what you're forgetting because if it's if it's out of sight, it's out of mind. And what you're forgetting is when people are on programs, food stamp and SNAP and this and that, whatever the program is, it's a digital card. So they walk up, no different than a MasterCard, a Visa, an American Express, whatever. They're in, they're out. There's no line. There's no delay. You don't know the difference. So what we're just saying is if you put it back to the stamp program, the percentage of people that are on these programs right now, the average lineup would be almost a mile long at every Walmart across America. I hope that puts some perspective as to how truthful they've been and i don't blame only one i'm equal man i'm equal on that and how ignorant you all have been okay so this is a two-part problem as a matter of fact corruption amplifies as ignorance increases 
So keep keep it up. I mean, we're right on track for where you're heading us. But I mean, a lot of us are branching away, and we're we're giving our last endearing efforts to try and bring good people along. It's going to take a lot of forwarding information, and it's going to take a lot of action. And there's an old saying that goes, you know, if you're still worried about what people, I just saw someone a couple of hours ago. I I went out for a bit. I saw someone a couple of hours ago. I haven't seen in a long time and not, you know, asking me how things are and this and that and being very honest with him, you know, I, I, yeah, you know, just being honest with him. I know he knows better and he's not standing up and fighting. He's just turtling and caving and I have, I just have no respect. He should be forwarding information to everybody, just like the mentors are. He should be giving his extra time. Time is a wonderful gift. We've discussed this on previous videos. But if you don't understand at this late stage that sometimes you need to turn your back on the crowd if you want to lead an orchestra, then pay the consequences. I cannot believe, and now we're going to get some videos from ranchers from different parts of the world and Texas, and we're going to get... I know in the Dominican, uh, the, the Dominican Republic, Recently, we just dumped about 35% of our milk. We're slaughtering beef and pork like never before, chickens like never before. This people makes no sense. We, I, I just, uh, the gullibility, I, I just, uh, I just, wow, there's, there's, there's no words for it. There's no words for it from people. All I could say is a lot are going to get what they deserve. We all will. Until next time, again, we thank you for all your efforts, and we're just going to keep this good, solid information from real people coming towards you. Please help us get it out to others. Uh, latest on, unfortunately, two to three weeks, you're going to start experiencing some real serious shortages. So take it for what it's worth. Uh, we're glad we're not there, but I'm just telling you mathematics, it's two to three weeks, okay? Take it. We're only trying to help. Yes, yes. No, no. Just remember, we said two to three weeks. It's Barry. Till next time.